Hi, it's Gene at the Mavstar Observatory. Uh, just before we get into it, just a big thanks to those two people that have uh, made a little contribution towards our observatory since the last video. And, you know, guys, I just want to say there's a lot of work that goes into it. And, you know, it'd be really great if we could get just a little bit more support. Um, you know, just the other day, we managed to raise six pounds uh, for the observatory. And it got a little bit better since the last video. I will say that thanks to uh, just a couple of people, but you know we really do need to keep the support going. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm doing, and you're going to know that this is important really for what we are uh, now studying um, here at the observatory, and that is um, muons. And what we're trying to do is create a scale uh, that we can use to compare levels of muons in terms of harmful radiation. You know, it's no point us just looking at the counts and doing nothing with it we've got to try and compare them uh, against something uh, so we can say look you know at this certain level it's dangerous um, I think the evacuation level of Chernobyl was 300 mil, uh, 350 millisievets uh, that was you know if, if there was obviously higher than that then you know they was evacuated so um, but we're dealing with um, a bit of an uncertainty with muons because we're trying to classify them as what sort of radiation they are. And I've come across this article here that's talking about uh, that they could be classed as weak forces or weak interactions um, by nuclear and particle physicists. And in that case, they are classed as beta uh, decay. Of nuclei so if we just look at another scale just to give you an idea of where I'm you know not convinced that we should classify it as beta decay um, I'll show you why that reason is so the reason why I'm struggling to think that it's beta radiation is because you know you can uh, stop it with you know a reasonable size aluminium plate now okay I did do a crude experiment the other day when I had the muon detector running, I held a little piece of lead over the top, and it didn't seem to do anything. And this could be there could be a multitude of reasons for that. And I mean, we could have been having side collisions on the scintillator, and of course, the photosynthesizer is going to pick it up if it's getting in there somehow. Um, the only way to find out is to completely wrap it up in different materials. What I do know is that we can slow um, the counts down. Um, from what I've seen someone was taking readings at the fifth floor in a 10 storey building and then they went down to the lower part of the building and I think they reduced the count by about 30 it was a crude experiment but you know it does show that a certain level, level of material can stop muons uh, but the, for the reason uh, I'm struggling to find a comparison with beta decay is because you know it seems that we can slow it down with an aluminium plate well if you look a little bit lower uh, gamma radiation goes through you know uh, very dense material concrete glass steel um, so I th I think it's got to be something in between beta and gamma um, and that's what I'm doing today I'm trying to you know find a comparison then we can find a way of um, building you know a chart that we can use to say well if we get this many counts of muons at any particular point in time uh, and we constantly receive a high dosage of these muons then we know that it's equivalent to a certain uh, level of uh, millisievets uh, or servets whichever is the case so you know that's where we are today that's what we're doing I know it's not very exciting uh, but you know we have got to have some way of classifying uh, the type of radiation that muon fits into and you know then we can start to you know um, draw some assumptions on to you know how dangerous a certain level of muons are because this is this is the important thing now guys you know we've we built these to find out how much cosmic radiation it, there is inbound um, we, we've got the uh, detection equipment now to do that what we need to do is have a scale uh, of how harmful a certain amount of that radiation is and uh, we know um, and we will uh, have the facts to prove that that over time uh, during this low solar output and we're in the solar minimum right now so we know the heliosphere is low uh, there will be more cosmic radiation inbound in our atmosphere and it will um, in turn be converting when it hits uh, particles in our upper atmosphere into 
um, you know, these subatomic particles or elementary particles such as muons. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot we can do with the other uh, byproduct of uh, decaying uh, pion because, you know, you can't even stop uh, neutrinos. They fly straight through one end of the Earth and out the other and do so in a very, very short space of time because of the speed that they're travelling. But I will say this, uh, because of the experiments I saw conducted, it does look like there can be shielding achieved, and I don't know what, what extremes we're going to go through to shield completely all the muons uh, that do come through our atmosphere. But the good thing is, is that it can be shielded. Uh, if someone was getting a 30% reduction on the fifth floor, and then when they put it in the basement, um, what you've got to remember is there was on the fifth floor there was another five floors above so you know gamma uh, sorry um, muons were coming through the five floors and everything that was in them five floors of the building and um, you know there was also uh, when the uh, detector was put in the basement they was still also managing to travel through the ten floors but it just shows you can get a 30% reduction through a certain amount of uh, material uh, and the reason why I think it's important to mention this and give you guys sort of an idea of how much material we need to block these high speed muons is because you know some people have said well would we be safer in an underground bunker and that just depends on how much material and what type of material is above the bunker simply as that but I think what's more important is getting a scale uh, that we can uh, use to compare the levels of muons and then classify it as a particular type of radiation and uh, you know, then we know if we're in um, a dangerous territory uh, with the amount that we receive. I will say that the uh, detector, since I've had it running now, it's got to be getting on close a week, and I've took a few uh, tests. It's a, I had a 24-hour test at the moment. It fluctuates on a daily basis, and uh, no given hour is the same. And I, I think the reason for that is, is like I explained, you know, our Earth is rotating. And, you know, it is also not just rotating on its axis, but it's also travelling around our sun at great speeds. And for that reason, you know, we could be in a different environment at any given time. And, you know, cosmic radiation uh, could be um, more so inbound in that area because of, a, you know, a, 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 an explosion of a sun, you know, millions and millions of miles away but we just so happen to be in the path of that explosion at that point of the rotation whilst we travel around the sun. Um, what we do know is that in generally, uh, you know, when the heliosphere shrinks, it does allow more cosmic radiation. And so what we're talking about is um, what really affects us is the level of protections that we've got. So in this case, we, we have two types of protection. We have the heliosphere, uh, which is inflated by the sun and only reduces when we have grand solar minimums or we come to an end of a solar cycle. And we also have our primary protection, which is our magnetosphere. And as you guys know, um, according to what has been projected by mainstream organisations, it is weakened by 20%. But, you know, we've been monitoring the magnetosphere now for a good 10 months, I think. I think it's around about that. It might be a little bit longer. But... The thing is, is we've not seen any great noticeable uh, reduction in the magnetosphere strength, but that does not mean that when the pole migrates to a certain level and goes into a migration, that that will be the case at that point. It could go down to probably 95. It could, we could see a 95% reduction of the protection that we've got with regards to our magnetosphere. But if we start to see that, you know, you guys will be the first to hear about it because we've got the equipment that detects it and also, as you know, tracks the magnetic north pole and now, as a nice little um, bonus, we've got these muon detectors and, you know, I, I am interested to um, get this scale so that we can compare the levels of radiation inbound through muons um, and, you know, after that we can then put one, say, in Brazil, South Africa. We can measure the low-intensity region where the, the weakest part of the Earth's magnetic field is in those regions. And we can also put one, say, in Australia where there's a high-intensity region and we can compare, you know, the radiation uh, levels of muons in them regions. Um, guys, if you know of uh, a conversion scale from, from muons uh, to a particular type of radiation that they've classified it as, 
then you know please send it over to me or give me a link or if you uh, come across anything in your searches you know share it because you know I'm not uh, a supercomputer you know it's going to take me some time to go through all this to find you know a suitable uh, method of converting the levels of radiation but uh, you know you might want to you know just pause the video at some point so you can read through some of this you know cosmic radiation is as you can see classified as background radiation but it's what happens when the particles um, you know such as cosmic rays interact with our atmosphere they create byproducts such as uh, neutrinos and muons so you know, it's an interesting article and uh, I think it's well worth you know sharing it with you so if you want to know what radiation is you know you can just pause this at any point in time and have a little read but like I say you know on that article that we was looking at at the beginning of the video they compared it with beta decay well we know it goes through you know dense material like um, concrete and other materials so it could be something in between gamma and uh, beta but uh, you know I've just got to do do the work and you know get this uh, comparison for us so that's where we are guys you know I just thought you know you might find that interesting and uh, want to know what we're up to today so there you are I'll leave it with you I'll let you enjoy your Sunday and I'll catch up with you at some point in the week you know have an amazing time guys be safe and uh, as always there's a link down there if you want to help support us uh, we really could do with a few more people because you know this observatory is becoming slowly and gradually more costly so you know any help would be you know great and uh, you can also support us if you want on patreon there you go i'll leave it with you and uh i'll say what i usually do bye for now